right, maybe you guys are new to the Lincoln SA200, and well, I say new as in you're new to them because they've been around for a very long time, 30s, 40s. This one's a 1974 model, but it, as you can see, it's, well, pretty nice. That washed right off. <laughs> this side, pretty nice and clean. Uh, the video is about amperage settings on these. So a lot of people will say a lot of erroneous things. They'll say, oh, it's only a 200 amp machine. Um, SA, first off, doesn't sound for anything bad. <laughs> it's a shielded arc, okay? So shielded arc uh, welding, or you know, is you know, arc welding or stick welding, same difference. But yeah, shielded arc, 200 is 200 amps. At 200 amps, it has a 60% duty cycle. But this is not a 200 amp machine. This is a 300 amp machine. And a lot of people get them load tested, and they're actually they usually hunt around a little bit they're not usually 100 percent perfect 300 there's a way to roll the rack and you can kind of get her get them to burn a little hotter than that um although i, I would advise against that generally speaking uh, not to do that but for any you know for anyway these are 300 amp machines generally or at least factory <laughs> but you do have these gears people call these gears right so it starts over at first first gear which isn't really used that often but third gear is very very common uh, most people weld in third gear, generally speaking, on these. Then we have a rheostat over here. We can see our maximum OC, o, OCV is uh, 93, so that's 93 volts. So uh, that's max. So the way this works is on max, we're going to get about 190 amps. On minimum, we're going to get about 120 in third gear. But it's a little different. Like, let's say we were in, uh, let's say we were in second gear and this thing maxed out at 130 amps, let's say. So pretty violent arc, lots of dig, let's say. Arc force dig is another way to turn, to put it. So our volts are really high, and our amps are still, let's say one, or let's say we have it at 90. Let's say we're hitting 120 amps exactly, right? But our volts would be really high, be very violent, and be good for like a 60, 11, uh, 70, 60, uh, 10, but it'd be terrible for like a 70, 18. Let's say we need a 70, 18, but we still need that 120 amps. Then we can put this at about 10 or 20, and we'd be around 120 amps, but we have a very pretty low uh, arc force or dig, and it'd be a lot smoother and a lot better for like 70, 18, 110, 18, that kind of thing, 80, 18. It'd be good for low uh, hydrogen rods. And uh, that's kind of how this works. You have to kind of play with it. It's not an exact thing. It's not like my Trailblazer where you, you know, have a digital gauge and you can see exactly what it goes to. But then again, this is a very old design, but they're, they're around for a reason. People restore these for a reason. There's a reason why they're still around and still used, even though they're a little archaic. But, and a little, there's some quirks to them as well, like, like this, you know, they're in, well, the way they idle and different things. There's a lot of quirks to them, oil leaks, but there's a reason why people deal with them. Um, but that, hopefully that gives you like an idea of how you can run different rods different.